it's two violins, one viola, a cello, and a bass. I think there's a five piece we put on at the end. Harp. Oh, there's, there's tubular bells on it, they're real. No, no, there's like this huge instrument with all the strings. So harp? Yeah. Harp? With a harp? Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember, I'm trying to remember if that was real or not. I remember the tubular bells we did with samples and then at the very end we put that on. We might have got a real harp in. I could never go to a sample. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he had some really good ones and because he was, um, cause he was an arranger, he did a lot of really big arranging sessions. So often he would say, oh, you know, like he'd do some timps and he'd say to the guys, oh, can you record that for me? And they'd, have, they'd be in like a Air Studios or Abbey Road with a really great timp sound and they'd record it on a DAT for him and then he'd take it home and he'd make his own samples up into the emulator. So he sort of had his own library. But also it's what he plays. I've noticed before, you know, you get someone who's a keyboard player and they can play it very convincing, but someone who's an arranger, they know that a cello could never play that note there because their range is going to stop. So they play it on a different instrument. And that's what makes it, it gives you that subconscious thing that it's all real. It's just knowing where to put it on the thing. So it's got a lot easier now because the sample libraries you get are much, obviously, faster with Vienna strings and things like that. But at the time, it, it, you know, it was quite. So I enjoy that when I hear it on the radio. And I had. I, did a lot of, I did quite an intense period with them. They, um, I'd worked with them a couple of times. And then the, the woman at the studio said to me, oh, Queen are coming in, they're in for 10 days. And they stayed for 14 months, solid. So um, it was quite intense. So I had some good times. So when I hear that, that stuff come on, it's kind of, it makes you feel good. Which album did you work on? I worked on, when they first came in, they were just tidying up the end of a film soundtrack, which became the Highlander film soundtrack. And then that turned into, then we did a little bit more on that, and it became the It's a Kind of Magic album. And then they went off, sorry, not a flash, no, no, that was before my time. They did that at, at Townhouse, but that was before my time. Um, and then um, they went off on tour, and then they came back in because they had to, they, they'd done a live concert, and the truck that had recorded it, some things had gone wrong. So the backing vocal mic hadn't got recorded from the drummer which is probably a good thing because it's covered in drums and because he moves around, it's often behind his head. So even when it does get recorded, it doesn't sound great. So he just went through, did one pass and just re-sang his backing vocals for this, um, I think it was for the Wembley concert that was put on telly. And then while we were doing that, they got asked about doing a live album. So they stayed in and did that. And then while we were finishing the live album, they did a show in Budapest that um, a guy had approached them who was a filmmaker in Budapest and he said, can I film it? And he filmed it with real film on 17 cameras. And the quality was just exceptional. So they made a film that came out in the Eastern Bloc at cinemas, and we did the sound for that. And then Roger did a solo album, Freddie did a solo album, the band started their next album, and it just continued like that. We did The Great Pretender somewhere in the middle of all that. I don't quite remember the order, but there was a lot of stuff. And it was great fun. Any questions about, you guys obviously have some plans of going into a certain part of the industry or into doing something that I might be able to throw some light on. Have you done anything with live music? Live, very little. Um, the, 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 you know, maybe, um, maybe a friend has asked me, could I come and help out? They're doing a showcase. Um, could I do the balance for that and I'll just get, I don't know about setting up the room and the monitors and that, so I'll get someone, whoever works there, to do that. And because I might know the songs, I'll just help ride the faders so that everything can be heard at the right times. But other than that, no, that's about as, as much as I've got into live music. Recorded a couple of live things, but again, that's very much, you just set things at a safe level, make sure they're nice and clean, and then just make sure it all gets recorded and deal with it later. It's not really, you don't really mess around too much. Uh, what did you work on with uh, Faith No More? Faith No More, um, it was a track called oh, Small Victory. Do you know the album? Yeah, I can't remember the album. Basically, I was, I was doing a fair bit of work with a producer called Youth, and he got asked to do a remix. So, um, 
they asked to do a remix. They asked him to do a remix. So we um, we basically sampled. We took their drums, mixed all their, took the multi tracks, mixed all their drums down to stereo, and sampled a few different loops of different grooves he played, and then loaded them into a sampler. Um, ran it against their guitars and bass and vocal, and then Youth put in a few of his own loops and a few fours on the floor and a few th things that he has. No, they didn't come in, sadly. But um, they were in London, and um, <coughs> I fancied going to see them. So I called up their record company. I didn't know them. And um, they said, uh, and I didn't know anyone at their record company, and they didn't really, because they're in America, their London label didn't have much to do with it. So I just phoned the gig and spoke to the tour manager and just said, look, um, I worked for, on something for the band. They didn't come in, I didn't get to meet them, but I'd love to come and see them. And they said, uh, okay, what's your name and what did you do? And I told them. And then uh, it came out and he said, yeah, the band said, yeah, please come down and uh, come back. They'd love to say hello. They really liked it. And they, they, were, they were really nice. Yeah, in Brixton. And they were really nice guys. It was around the time, I think it had, they, they did a cover of Easy. I think that's on the same album. The Lionel Richie cover. Was it? Yeah. So it was a remix, unfortunately, they didn't come in. I did a thing, I've, I've done a couple of things. When I was an assistant, I worked with you two a little bit, but they never came in. And then uh, from not this album that's just come out, the previous album, again, with Steve Lillywhite, Steve Lillywhite had produced some of the tracks. He called me up and said, would you mind doing a mix of one of the tracks for a single? He said, um, it's on the album, the band really want it as a single. It's called All Because Of You. Um, they weren't quite happy with the album version. They like it, but for a single, they just, they were never 100% about something. And um, he said, since they've done it live, he's changed the bass part. And when they do it live, he does the bass part, and they much prefer it. So he said, it'll mean just redoing the bass and mixing the thing. I said, OK, great, yeah, I'd love to. And it was, like, it was like a few days after they'd done Live 8 and stuff. So it was, you know, they were, it was quite vibey. And then uh, we kept trying to arrange it. And then they had gigs. And then I got a call saying, right, he can't come in to do this bass. So I said, oh, well, we'll just carry on with that. He said, no, he really wants to do it. So I said, OK, um, you want me to come there? How are we going to do it? And then I got a phone call from the guy that works with me. He said, OK, what they're going to do, they're going to put it in the set for the next three nights. And we've got a 002, Digizine 002. And we're going to record the voice and the bass. And they did it to a click in the studio. And they had a guy working on some of their tracks, a programmer. And he did a few little sequences. And they really liked them. So they said, we're going to do this live. Because it's got these sequences in, we're going to have to do it to a click live. So they said, it's done to a click live, so we'll send you the vocal and the bass, and then you can put it into the other version and, and mix it for us. So I went, OK, great. So they sent it along. And in the meantime, their office sent me the, the Pro Tools session for the master. It's all done to a click. The only thing was, they speed up and down against the click. When they get near the chorus, they get really excited, and they speed up against the click. And then when the chorus ends, they come back down to the click. And I, oh. and I thought, this is going to be, you know, I'm going to have to be time stretching and everything. They sent me these things, they speed up and down exactly the same live, exactly. It held the whole way from top to bottom, except something buzzed, one of the frets, and I had to nick a bit. They sent me, I think they sent me one from Ireland, one from Wales, two from Dublin and one from Wales, and one of them was better, so I used that and just nicked a bit. Um, did the mix, did a couple of versions, um, uploaded them to my FTP site, their guy, when they got to their next gig, downloaded it, made a CD, the band listened and said, yeah, this is the one, we like version three, okay, great, and then so we all did it with technology and redid the bass without even meeting or them coming in. <laughs>